What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are down here, honey, to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac explosive episode go ahead and like subscribe and comment let me know you stop by honey Whew. it was a lot it was a lot it was a lot let's get to it let's get to it because it was a lot it was a lot and it was gross it's so gross and when i tell you robin karen dixon Oh, you are so musty and you know you musty. Oh, I was like, Robin is really showing her ass. Oh, it's so, un she's so unlikable. For so many years, Robin, for me, has been like, likable. She hasn't, that she hasn't done anything. But these past couple of seasons, she's been it it's become like she's increasingly hostile and she's hostile like like you want to fight like there's an imbalance there's some emotional regular there's something going on like i don't know if the thing with juan was happening back then with you know the thing with the school i don't know but i'm like girl are you maybe i need to go watch the episodes from last season because i'm trying to figure out where is the hostility towards Wendy coming from y'all, please let me know. Cause I don't, I don't understand because she cussed y'all out last season. Is this where all this is coming from? Because will you be able to get over it? Because Ashley was telling everybody you only had 47 cents in your account when you first met her. And I remember you was foaming at the mouth, food and shit flying at the mouth when you were asking Ashley, what does she want from y'all? And y'all been able to come back from that. You're so angry with Wendy. Why? I don't get it. I don't understand. I was like, oh girl, why are you so mad? Girl, it's a mess. So Mia, they're at the house. Mia is talking on the phone. Go ahead and like, subscribe, comment. Let me know you stop by. Mia's talking on the phone to Peter. She's trying to find out what kind of issue do you got? She says, oh, we're coming to um, bar one. We're going to come to your restaurant, whatever. And who's all coming? She mentions Wendy. He says, oh, I got beef with Wendy. He says it in a joking matter. He said, because we're supposed to do a deal together and I'm waiting for her to get back to me. Turns out Wendy is waiting for Peter to get back to her because she's waiting to go see the property. She wants to see the property. And she showed an email or a text message that says that she's waiting for him. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, it could be an email he's waiting to hear back from a text. I don't know. But she showed a text message that said that she's waiting for him, his response to being able to go see the property. So he didn't say all of that to um, me. I'm just letting y'all know. Um, so Mia goes, well, what is it? He was like, you know, she was supposed to get back to me on something and she hasn't got back to me. So she's just not calling you. She's just ignoring you. She was like, um, like trying to make it seem like I was like, oh, why is she doing that? And even Wendy called her out like, what are you doing right now? Because you're trying to make something out of nothing. But anyways, so Robin, Giselle and Ashley are in the room having a conversation um, Ashley is telling them that men are coming out of the woodworks trying to talk to her. They're asking her about the house hunting. She's saying that um, she's going to rescind her offer because the tenants are not moving in time. She says Michael is acting funny. And then Robin, let me tell you how your girl, your girlfriends will lead you down the wrong fucking path. Robin is telling Ashley that the reason why Michael is acting funny is because Michael, because you guys are going to, through a divorce and he's probably like one worried about you, like screwing somebody else. Girl, he ain't worried about her screwing somebody else. Are you new here? I was like, Robin, why would she say that? You trying to make her feel good? Girl, go away. Girl, she's like, I, he probably didn't, didn't think that you would file. That was the end of their conversation. Candace calls Wendy and tells her what time she's going to arrive. 
I am so glad Candace missed all of this because they would they would have figured out a way to blame Candace for this child. So I'm glad Candace missed all of that mess. Um, she tells her that we have a twin bed. Our bed is small or whatever. Jacqueline and Mia are talking to each other in elevated voices um, in the other room. They're getting ready for dinner. And I guess she's asking Mia for toiletries that she didn't bring, um, deodorant, tampons, whatever. So she's making a comment that she never has anything and that, you know, she can have up to five things from me. And when she gets on the sixth thing, she needs to go to CVS. Fine. That might be a thing between them, but they were really loud going back and forth. I don't know if that's normal for them or were they doing that for attention? Um, we know that Amia is an attention seeker. So we do, I'm not sure who Jacqueline is, but Jacqueline um, at the table said that if she had met Mia as an older person and not as a child, that she probably wouldn't be her friend. You, you saw Sharice was like, oh, really? For me, that I would take that as a warning. I would. Because what this girl who's known this girl since she was a teenager is telling her, what I know about her as an adult, we wouldn't be friends. Who she is, if I didn't know her before, if we basically, if we weren't family, we wouldn't be friends. Y'all need to listen to stuff like that. And for her to be saying that about her when she's not at the table, I've always said it. A testament of your friendship is how the person talks about you when you are not there and how they let other people talk about you when you're not there. But how your friend talks about you when you're not around, that's the type of friend they really are to you. Yeah, when you're in my face, we cool, but how are you when I'm not there? You watch out for bitches like Jacqueline and Mia. Those are the type of bitches you don't take on trips with you. And it reminded me of this girl's story. And it reminded me of so many girls who take trips with women who don't like them. And this whole thing, I was thinking about Shanquilla. Sorry, I was. I was like, this is, this is, this is the vibration you're breaking bread at a table with, you saw Wendy sitting directly across from Robin. Robin seems to hate this woman. And y'all got to sit across. I can't break bread. Deepak Chopra would tell you, you can't even digest your food correctly when you're sitting at a table. One, in defense mode. You're not relaxed. Two, you are breaking bread with someone you do not like. That is out of order. You're not going to be able to digest your food. None of that is going to happen correctly. It's not. And it's true. Karen and Wendy, they're sitting on the couch. She's like, I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate my birthday, 59, blah, blah, blah. She tells her, Sharice and I haven't been friends basically since Sharice busted me out in front of everybody and said that I was talking to some man, a chauffeur named Blue Eyes. So we haven't been friends since. So I don't even know why she wants to act like we need to go to lunch. Bitch, you know why we're not cool. You ain't been calling me now. Now the cameras are up and you're calling me. I don't particularly care for farm girl Karen. But in this particular situation with her and Sharice, I 100% agree with her. What is it now? You went against me on the reunion, busted me out. You know I'm with this man by hook or crook. I had to get with the, her, Ashley, all these women getting with these old ass men to survive. I had to get with this old ass man to survive and you, you fucking shit up by saying I'm cheating on him with some man. Bitch, we're not friends. So I ain't talked to you in five years. You don't need to call me now. We don't need to go to lunch. None of that. And I'm with Karen on that. We can take a walk in Starbucks, she said, honey. She has questionable behavior and the bridge has burned. I don't know why she wants to talk to me. Ashley is outside doing TikTok. Um, when they, Mia comes out, um, uh, Griselda comes out, 
they're having a conversation. Ashley comes down from making her TikTok. Ashley's dress. I don't know. I was just like, girl, <laughs> what do you have on? It was like some sparkly um, la um, laces in her dress. I don't know. I was just like, girl, you look like you got that from Fredericks of Hollywood. If anybody knows about Fred <laughs> Fredericks of Hollywood, child, that's where it looked like it came from. Anyway. So they're sitting there talking and um, Mia shares with the girls that Peter said he had beef with Wendy and beef like, what, what are you talking about? Then Giselle chimes in and says that Peter felt like Wendy got in contact with him, looked him up to figure out what he likes, then got in contact with him to try to open a business. Now it looked for me, the way that they were talking, it seemed like, um, it seemed like what I said that Wendy is just trying to find some something to stick, right? Because it does look odd that okay, you're doing candles now, you want to get into restaurant. It looks like a Neela, where any opportunity that you think you can possibly see a return on, you are going to take it, even if it doesn't fall in line with what you're passionate about. That's why it looks odd, right? It looks odd that you want to start a restaurant business after starting a candle business. And someone said that, um, Wendy's probably trying to figure out, I can't remember who, it's, who said it, but Wendy's trying to probably trying to figure out what to do because her whole life she's been, you know, a, achieving and accomplish, accomplishing for her parents, for her mom and not for her. And now she's trying to, find what she wants to do now that she's has this platform and now she has an opportunity to do because the Bravo platform is affording her these other opportunities, which all of us don't understand when the other women who don't take the opportunities that come or even use the platform to expand their brand or whatever. Um, so it does for me, like, to be honest, like we love Wendy, but it does look like you're trying to just do whatever. And the way that Giselle said that Peter said that it, it I, I could, I could hear Peter saying, oh, she looked me up and was trying to figure out what I like to try to see and try to do business or whatever. And she said that Peter said he was just going to play along with her. I think either Mia or Giselle said that Peter was just going to play along with her. And then they were saying they were making comments like what Wendy, she don't have no money. So I thought that was weird for Giselle and Mia to both make comments that Wendy must not have any money in order to invest. And that's the reason why she didn't get back to Peter. Um, because you know how to sell candles. So that's the, that's the joke. Like, it's like, you're this professor PhD. Now you selling candles. Now you want to go into the restaurant business. So it does give that kind of like, you trying to figure out what to do. You really don't have any direction. That's what it's looking like. Right. In that moment, we did not know that they were going to bar one until Mia said it to Giselle and um, Stewie. So Wendy didn't know, right? Nobody else knew that they were going to bar one. Wendy says it and you could hear her in the audio say, oh, I didn't know that we were coming here or I didn't know we were coming here. I didn't know we were coming to bar one. I wish I, I wish we would have known. I, I wish I would have known we were coming to bar one. She says something like that to let us know that she did not know that they were coming there. So there would be no reason for her to call Peter. Right? Because I'm on vacation. I'm out here on vacation. I'm not here on business. I didn't know that we were going to bar one. So when she told Peter, when he came to the table, when she told Peter, check your text. I'm thinking Wendy might have texted them, texted him when she got there to say, Hey, you know, we're at bar one. I don't know. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of when she was like, check your text messages. Um, or was that the text messages that she was talking about where she said, 
I want to see the property. And he said, I will see. I don't know what she was referring to, but she said, check your text messages. The only thing that I can think of what I would have done is when I arrive, text Peter like, Peter, I'm up at bar one. Come holla at me. I didn't know we was coming up here. That's the only thing. Um, whatever. So they're taking shots. Um, they're getting ready to leave. They're taking shots. Ashley says, does a bear shit in the woods? And then um, Mia says, does a frog have a watertight asshole? So when they showed that on the clip, I went and looked it up. It is a phrase and it goes along with, does a bear shit in the woods? And the response is, does a, does a frog have a watertight asshole? I looked it up. It's something like, even Robin was like, I have never heard that expression. Neither have I. So I looked it up and it's actually a, a real expression and people use that expression. I, it's too much. I was like, what? Okay. The red lipstick Mia, I'm sorry. It just, I don't know. It's just too much. It looks like somebody just went like this across her face with red paint. It doesn't look good at all. Sharice was hot. It was hot. I don't know what's going on. Sharice. We're glad that Sharice stayed is what um, Mia is saying. Amia tells Karen that she understands, they're in the car now, she understands why um, she feels the way she does about Sharice because Sharice is so dramatic. Um, she tells Jacqueline, I'm not talking to you. And she was like, why? Watch, go back and watch when Mia is talking about Karen, uh, about Sharice, watch Jacqueline's face. The whole time. Watch her face. She's doing her eyebrows. She's making faces and she's looking at Karen. And then she's like looking and she's like, what? Like she's making all these weird faces. Watch, watch her. Um, now I'm more on your side. I understand that her asking you to lunch is probably just more drama, right? They arrived to bar one. Um, Wendy says, I had no idea we were coming here. Um, Jacqueline asks, is there hookah? Uh, Mia makes it seem like the girl's a drug addict. She was like, she does hookah all the time. And you could just tell like the way that she's, I don't know if she's doing it. I don't know what she's doing and why she's doing it, but she's doing it with Jacqueline. And then she does it with Wendy. And I don't know why she's doing it, but she's being the way that Robin kept saying that ain't what that Wendy was being antagonistic. And you have a lot of fucking nerve. You have a lot of, your name needs to be Anna. You got, you're so antagonistic. You're so brolic. You're so buff. You're so aggressive. You're so hostile. You are so ferocious. Robin Dixon. Yes. Hostile, antagonistic, um, aggressive. Um, what at, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I have, I have some for you. Yeah, we got it. All right. So Wendy looks cute. Everybody, um, let me think. Mm, Giselle looked cute. Um, Wendy looked cute in her little outfit. Karen, I don't know what Karen had on. It looked it, it looked okay. I don't know what Ashley had on. Um, I don't know what Mia had on. What's her name look regular? Jacqueline looked regular. I don't know what um Sharice had on. And I don't know what Robin had on. What? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. When is Candace coming? Um, Mia doesn't know. Candace lands at 10. This is what um, Wendy says. Candace has a chip on her shoulder. This is what Ashley says. And what's the boulder on your shoulder, honey? Because you got a boulder on your damn shoulder, girl. You got a lot of nerves talking about somebody got a chip on their shoulder. I was like, what? These girls are a mess. Um, she says, well, y'all were screaming at each other. That's what Robin was saying. Y'all were screaming at each other. Well, she doesn't like it when a mirror is up to her. She doesn't like it. And if that, if that means I'm vindictive, then that means I'm vindictive. Ashley tries to straighten up what Giselle said because Giselle lied and said that she, that Ashley said that the, um, Chris touched her friend's butt and was rubbing on her. And you saw Giselle was say what I heard. How did you hear that? How did you hear that? See, Giselle is a dangerous person. And the way that these women are so violent on this show, and the violence is not just physical. The violent is in their, violence is in their intentions and what they try to do and what they try to suggest. Phaedra Parks was another one. 
she used to make very dangerous suggestions. She, Phaedra was good at that. The power of suggestion. You don't even have to say it's true or not. Just make a suggestion. And what that does is plant a seed in somebody's mind. And that's all it does. Everyone in their interview, Mia, Robin, Giselle, everybody said that they heard that he, he touched her butt. I said, oh, these women are dangerous. They're very dangerous. It's so unbecoming. And I saw somebody last night say that the toxic viewership is probably going to affect the ratings. I think a lot of people are opting out of what's happening on the Real Housewives of Potomac. It's so ugly. It's not good at all. And like it's it's gone from natural conflict, right, with, you know, different mismatched personality types to sitting in your interviews, just just lying, coming out from a group scene onto the bus, lying, just lying. And it's not, it's, it's very, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous because you'll do it for, you'll do it for anybody. You'll do it with anybody or to anybody. You'll do it to anybody. Very dangerous. Well, what I heard, and Ashley was like, I said he was leaning on the bar. I didn't say he touched her. Well, what I heard, and then Robin and Mia, they said, I mean, he said, everybody said. I said, oh, that's not good. Um, Ashley was texting Michael, trying to figure out he was he was going to pick the kids up. <laughs> um Giselle says that she's so happy that Sharice and Karen spoke at the airport. It didn't seem like it was coming from a bad place. Um, and so we're happy. And they were like, whatever. And see, that's when Karen was like, okay, so why do we want to meet? Well, I was just, you know, trying to figure out what the problem is. Y'all know what the problem is. Do the math. If five years ago, on the reunion stage, you busted me out and said I was cheating on my husband with somebody named Blue Eyes, and I ain't talked to you since then, bitch. Get a clue. That's it. What are you calling me for now? We haven't spoken in five years. You went against me five years ago. It's a wrap. I wish the other women would act like that. You go against me. We're not coming back from none of this shit, girl. And you came for my marriage trying to say I was cheating on my husband. And if I was cheating on my husband, bitch, that's not for you to say nothing. And that's why I can't fuck with you. You can't be nowhere around me, girl, please. If I am cheating on my husband, bitch, you run your goddamn mouth too much on a grand stage. Absolutely not. Get the fuck away from me. Mm -mm. I'm with Karen. You know, I don't fuck with Karen. I don't fuck with nobody on this cast except for Candace and Wendy. That's it. I'm trying to think who else that's it i don't fuck with karen but on this point girl i don't fuck with you five years ago do the fucking math sharice you're a smart girl do the math um she started to come sharice tried to get wendy involved wendy was like girl don't eat this don't have shit to do with me because you did say that you didn't know if it was coming from a bad place or a good place or not so don't try to put me in it. I'm just saying what the girl said. Don't try to put me in. I didn't lie. They they repeated it. They showed it so we could verify if Wendy was lying or not. Don't be trying to put me in it. This is between you and Karen. Girl. What you scared of her? You scared of her? You don't want to? You don't want No, I'm not scared. Of you are obviously. Say what you need to say. You got all the smoke for me. Say what you need to say to Karen. Thank you. Um, Mia, you just said in the car that you understand why Karen, why Karen don't fuck with Cherie. So what the fuck are you talking about? She's like, oh, 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 oh. she started to damn malfunction, ugly bitch. And I'm so fucking glad 
after she threw that drink in Wendy's face, Wendy called her a crater face bitch. Bitch, anything. I'm going to talk about your crackhead mama, bitch. Throw a drink in my face. All bets are off. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your entire family, bitch. Call me Cersei Lannister, bitch. I'm coming for everybody. Do you understand me? Throw a drink in my face. I don't have to get up. I'm going to cut you down with every word that comes out of my mouth. And what kind of boss are you? What kind of boss are you? You call you a CEO. You just embarrassed your whole brand. Look how you act. And I love it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Robin. Um, Mia says, that's not what I said. Of course, she's lying. Then Robin goes, don't let her twist your words around. You shut up too. That's our, I'm so, I, I wish the way that Wendy be telling um, Mia to shut up. The way she be telling, I'm going to have to come back. The way she be telling her to shut up, she need to tell Robin to shut up too. She need, I have so much more. We're going to have to come back, y'all. Take care of each other. I'll be right off. So I'm just going to start from where I left off on my notes. Sorry if it's not in order. It should be in order because my notes are in order. So I left off on the part where I said, if you throw a drink in my face, there's no telling what I'm going to say back to you. Um, all bets are off. All rules of etiquette and decorum are dismantled. So whatever you, whatever I say to you after you throw a drink in my face, you can't say, I, I, I can't say something like that. Like I said, I might talk about your crackhead mama. I might talk about the fact that you had to marry an old ass man. I might talk. I don't know what you and G do. I don't know what y'all do. You the one who had to ask him before you left what was off limits. So if I say, I don't know what you and your husband do. I don't know what y'all do. So Mia tries to explain what she said about Sharice in the car to um, Karen. Um, and she's she's like, that's not what I said. I did not say that. And then that's when Robin goes, um, don't let people twist your words around. I don't know. I don't like Robin. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like her. Mm -mm. She's not likable at all. And it's like, you don't have no reason to be mad. You shouldn't have came at that girl last season. And that's the reason why she came at you. And you, you mad at her. Why, why are you so brolic and rough and hostile towards her? You're a weak bitch. Anyways, you said it was just so much drama over the bathroom. That's all I was saying. It was just like, it's going to be drama if she adds you to lunch. And then, so then Sharice goes, so why is it that you understand why she's mad at me? What is it about that you understand? Basically, you are just trying to figure out where or who you can be friends with and cool with and who you can talk about when they're not there so that you can get in good with, with a certain group of people. Um, I'm glad Wendy busted her out in that moment and said, well, you just said in the car that you understood why Karen don't fool with Sharice. You saw how Sharice was looking at Mia after where it's like, bitch, okay, I got your number. And remember, Sharice, um, Karen, Giselle, Robin, they've known each other. Well, Robin and Giselle haven't known each other for a long time. It's my understanding that Robin and Giselle met on the set of Real Housewives of Potomac. They don't really have a friendship before the show. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, that Robin and Giselle did not know each other until this show. Right. They weren't in that friend group where they were hanging out with each other. And from the beginning, they were like, oh, girl, you got light eyes. I got light eyes. We're going to stick together. And we're going to stick together by hook or crook, no matter what. And that was a pact that they made very early. And as you could see, Robin holds true to that pact. She really does. She's like a little, little bulldog about it. But Mia, you be very careful coming into a friend group of women who have known each other over a decade over 15 years. How old is um, Carter and Corey? Junior high school? 
So they met each other when when Robin and, and Sharice have known each other a long time. Did y'all notice when she told, when Robin told Mia, don't let anyone twist your words around. And then as soon as Mia said that Sharice was acting dramatic over a bathroom, Robin stuck up for Sharice. Did y'all notice that? She was like, she doesn't, she, she doesn't have anything to be dramatic over about. She doesn't have a bathroom anywhere near her. She stuck up for her right away. So you could see how they will stick up and speak up for people. They didn't do that for Wendy. The only time they spoke up was to be against her or to make it seem like what she was doing was weird, right? Giselle loves to do that in the situation where she kind of wants to dismiss what you're doing or how you're expressing yourself. She'll describe it as weird. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. And she'll say it out loud, right? It's so gross. It's so gross. Um... Wendy singing happy birthday with Karen. That's not your friend either. She said, you don't fit what they're going for in this group. And the only thing that I can tell is the paper bag posse wants everybody to be a certain color. And that's why Karen said that Wendy doesn't fit the look of the group, right? So don't forget that she said that while you over there singing happy birthday with her ass, all right? Fine as Peter walks up, he greets everyone, gives everyone hugs. That's when he, you know, said, hey, why you didn't call me? And she was like, check your text messages, right? Mia, after he greets everybody, he says, you know, and then you see, <laughs> you saw Wendy was like, oh, I see you have Nigerian something on here. Is that new? And he was like, no, it's not. He was like, it's been on there for a long time. That kind of stuff, what Wendy did in that moment, the same thing she did with pulling up in a Sri Lanka. Stop acting like you know stuff or that you're up on stuff. It's okay to be like, oh, this is cool that you got Nigerian things. I've never been here before, this and that. It just it just validates what Peter, what Giselle said that Peter said to her about Wendy not really knowing me. She's just hooking up with me because she sees me as an opportunity and I'm just going to play along with her. Um... After Peter leaves, Mia goes to Peter and she's like, what's happening? And tell me what's happening between you. You say you got beef with her. What's going on? What's going on? So this is normal behavior, what she's doing, right? You know, you're going to your homeboy to find out why he got beef with the girl at the table. So he was like telling her that it's some paperwork that I sent over to her and I haven't heard back from her. So she's just ignoring you. She's pumping herself up so that she can go confront her later. That's classic, right? It's nothing she's doing out of the ordinary. So she's like, oh, so she didn't, she's just leaving you hanging. She didn't call you or nothing. And then he was like, nah, I like, and then he says, I mean, Tom I'm, giving you, I'm giving you tea to take back. Money in the early bird is I'm giving you tea to take back. Listen. I mean, Tom I'm, giving, money. I'm giving you tea Tom to take back. Money in the early I'm giving you tea to take back. That's what Peter told her. Peter put a battery in your back. So you new to this. Peter is, Patricia is, is true to this, honey. You new to this game. He put a battery in your back. You willingly took it, right? Put a battery in my back. Wind me up so I can go over here and get crazy with this woman for no reason. So she goes back to the table. She goes back to the table. Sharice tells him, I want to pick your brain. This is before I want to pick your brain because I want to open up a champagne lounge. And he was like, OK, um, that's fine. Peter says, I feel a way because she's coming to my place. She's in my city and she didn't call me. That is when Mia should have said, oh, they didn't know they were coming here. That would have cleared it up. But no, I'm not going to clear it up. I'm not going to tell Peter she didn't know that she was coming here so that he can stay on. She was in my city and didn't call me. Wendy's rationale is I'm here on pleasure. I'm not here on business. There's no reason for me to call Peter. Her injecting, you know, calling a man. I'm just using my husband. That to me fell flat. Like I felt like I, I wish that she wouldn't say that. Even though everybody's like, that's kind of confusing. 
why are you saying, then Wendy said, well, why are you saying that I need to call this man when I arrive in town? That's not my man. He's not my man. I don't need to call him. Well, you should have called him because he's trying to mentor you. He's trying to show you this and that, but I'm not here on business. And I wish that Wendy would have said, I don't even know we was coming here. Nobody knew we was coming here because when Mia went outside with Giselle and Ashley, she, they were like, where are we going? And she said to bar one and Giselle said, oh, I knew we were going to go there. Like I figured we were going to go there. We're out here, Peter, housewives. That's where we go. It only makes sense. So Wendy didn't know. So for, her, for, for Mia to come back to the table and tell her you didn't call Peter to tell him you were in town. Well, it doesn't make sense because I'm not in town to see Peter. I'm not in town on business. I didn't even know I was coming to bar one. So there would be no reason for me to call Peter and be like, hey, Peter, I'm in Miami. Now, maybe if her and Peter were closer, she would have called him and said, hey, Peter, I'm in town. Maybe, but they're not that. They just met each other. And that's what Peter said. They just met each other. So I feel like making it like she should have called him. Um, and then everyone agreeing with Mia. That's the part that I don't like is that peanut gallery, especially from Giselle. Like I want to tell Giselle to shut the F up. I really do. Jacqueline shares with the group while Mia um, and Sharice go to the bathroom and go to Peter that she wouldn't be friends with Mia if she met her as an older woman. <clears throat> she's bossy. She bosses me around. Ashley goes, we saw. I'm the only one of her friends who doesn't go along with her shit. I'm the only one of her friends who doesn't go along with her shit. I was like, oh, okay. So they get back to the table. Mia says, Peter said he has beef with you. I don't have beef with men. So what are you talking about? Don't start. That was Mia. Don't start. When she said that, you know what I thought of? When cops um, put a knee in somebody's back and they tell them to stop resisting. And it's like, I'm not doing anything. What are you talking about? I'm not even doing what you're trying to make it seem that I'm doing. Don't start. And she was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Don't start, Wendy. Don't start. Girl, I don't have beef with men. So what are you talking about? What does Peter have beef with me for? If Peter has beef with me, he can call my husband. Well, this is business. And this here, here's everybody in the background. That's weird. That's strange. No, this is business. You need to get away from that. Um, you can call him and tell him you were here. That's what Wendy, I feel like Wendy should have said, I didn't know he was coming here. So didn't know who knew we were coming here. So she says, don't, don't tell me about being a boss. Why are you talking about her husband? Me and my husband don't play that, play that. I'm in town for business. That's when Mia throws the drink. Now it hit Wendy, you know, some, some, you know, spray got on her. She didn't do anything. Ashley and Karen get the F out of the way. I noticed that Karen was way far back from the table when Mia did like this. You're not going to talk about my husband. So she says, you're not going to talk about my husband. Wendy did not talk about G. She did not say anything about her husband af before the drink was thrown and that's it so if you are saying that you threw the drink because she talked about your husband you're lying you couldn't figure out what to be mad at wendy about right because she did kind of shut you up by saying i'm not in town on business so there's no reason for me to call peter and I find it convenient that you brought us here, but that's okay. Cause she said it in the, in the interview, I find it convenient. You brought us here. It's fine though, but there's no reason for me to check in with Peter. When I get to Miami, I don't get down like that. 
and I'm not here on business. I don't know what you and your husband do. You and your husband get down like that. Me and my husband don't get down like that. I'm not checking in with no man when I come to town. The only man I'm checking in is with my husband. I wish she would have left that part out. I understood why she was saying it, but because you can have relationships with men outside of it being romantic. You can have a conversation with Peter without Eddie being present. Um, so it kind of, for me, I understood what, where she was coming from, but I, I wish that she wouldn't have framed it that way. Because again, women can have relationships with men that aren't romantic. Newsflash, okay? Robin starts filming. Um, and then she says that Wendy is antagonistic. And then Wendy says, y'all be fucking men and women. And they were like, oh, no, oh, no. And I love that Wendy flipped it on me and said, you throwing a drink on me over a man? What are you fucking, Peter? I said, yes. Get it, 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 get it. Because you're doing the most. You're doing the most over your brother. <laughs> That's your brother. Hey, brother. Remember when he pulled up? Hey, brother. What boss throws a drink? You thought I was going to fight you? Are you fucking Peter? Are you fucking Peter? Robin says that Wendy is antagonistic. Karen tells Mia, now you know that was wrong. She was talking about my husband. She wasn't. So we're going to leave that. We're going to leave it because the, the series of events were you came back to the table fucking with me, trying to create conflict. And because the thing with Peter didn't work, as soon as I said, you, I don't know what you and your husband do, then you decided to say that I was talking about your husband. Then you threw a drink in my face after I said I wouldn't be checking in with him because I'm here on, I'm not here on business. And you wanted to shut her up because you couldn't keep going with her. So you had to shut her up and become violent. Throwing a drink is assault. We've established that. Throwing a drink is assault. So. We have been able to hold ourselves above the stereotype. And in five minutes, she took it away. That's not okay. This is an awful role model for black women, for her <laughs> daughter. Robin filming, whack. That's antagonistic. Well, I just want to make sure there's no he said, she said. Yeah, because y'all lie. Y'all sit up here and lie. And will lie in everybody's face. But you don't have to film shit. We got production. They'll roll it to show that y'all are lying. They will. But she was talking about my husband, Karen. And now Mia has a problem with Karen. Because she says that Karen didn't stick up for her. You're off cold, light skin. Almighty sister light skin, you are out of order. You were supposed to stick up for me, a Karen. No matter what, you out of order, Karen. You're not supposed to be sticking up for Wendy. Then she tried to say that Wendy was wrong. And then Wendy made it clear, like, I didn't say nothing about G until after. And to be clear, like I said earlier, if you throw a drink on me, it's going to be a lot of slow singing, uh-huh, a lot of flowers bringing, okay? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be an annihilation. I'm going to turn into a terrorist. You're going to wish you never threw a drink on me. You are going to want to fight me after I say what I say to you. Yeah, because I'm going to say some fighting words. Yeah, I am. And I'm not going to move out of my seat. Then when Wendy said, what the fuck you going to do? Because she's had enough, right? Wendy had enough at that moment. Bitch, what the fuck you going to do? You ain't going to do shit. And look at how you look now. Look how, how embarrassing you are. This is, you a CEO? And, and, and I'm, the, I'm, I'm the only black woman at the table. Then Wendy said, I'm the only, I'm the youngest black professor at Johns Hopkins. She should have never mentioned her 
where she worked. That's, I think, one of the rules. You really can't mention where you work. You really can't because how you're behaving once you mention where you work, then that's like you're representing them. So you need to keep your jobs out of it. She could have said, I am the youngest professor at one of the most prestigious, whatever, whatever, whatever. But she could have left the name out because John Hopkins at the end of the of the episode was like, we don't have nothing to do with Potomac. <laughs> I went on John Hopkins um, uh, website and um Wendy, Dr. Wendy Acefo is still listed as faculty. Okay. Just so we're clear. She got called out. This is what Mia says about Wendy. It's so funny how, cause this is exactly what, what, um, what's her name did to you the last time projection. She doesn't like it when somebody says something that's either true or that she's insecure about. Hello, kettle girl. What? I said, that's you, <laughs> girl, that's you, shut up, that is, you, that is so you, Mia, then she called her a crater face, and she was like, crater face, that's when they turned around, when she called her crater face, oh, no, don't come towards me about nothing, don't, call, come, don't come towards me about nothing with your crater face, you Teddy Perkins looking bitch. Bitch, I would have, I'm going to tell you, I would have wore that girl out and she was getting the best of her. She was letting her have it. You look stupid. You thought I was going to fight you? Come on, girl. We better than that. Look at your whole brand is fucked up. Look how you look. Look how you're doing your brand. You look stupid. Did you hear um, Jacqueline tell me she's a big girl? She's a big girl. You're a big girl. Girl. <laughs> Shut up. I'm done talking to you. That's what she hit her. <laughs> I said, yes, get it. Shut up. I'm done talking to you because you stupid. You saying stuff that don't even make sense, girl. She's throwing drinks. She can't control herself. She's violent. Look at the CEO. Look at the CEO. Wendy said, what type of raggedy bitch does that? What type of raggedy bitch says something to another woman about a man? How are you checking me about my business dealings with Peter? You have nothing to do with it. And he put a battery in your back and you came back and embarrassed yourself, your brand, your children, your family, your crackhead mama. Everybody was embarrassed by your behavior. Chiropractic. What's the place? Chiropractic where they pop you. They pop you back. What is it called? Joint. Joint chiropractic. Oh, and. Why you talking about Wendy not having any money? Word on the street is somebody's fucking with y'all money. Is that true? That's what I heard. Somebody was messing with y'all money down there. Control your temper. Robin says that Wendy antagonizes to the utmost. Wendy is the winner. Did you see when Robin, Robin got so mad that Wendy kept going you're filming and then and then Giselle's off, off to the side talking about that's weird that I mean it is business I mean that's kind of true like she always has something to say and it's always against Wendy Mia leaves she walks away she threw she like threw her purse at like she came back to the table they sat down came back and then she started again and that's when Wendy said what kind of raggedy bitch <laughs> what kind of raggedy bitch throws a drink at a woman because she said some words to her you don't have no self-control. That's the thing. You don't have no self-control. Your lexicon is limited. So all the only thing that you animals and savages know how to do is resort to physical violence because you don't have the words. You don't have the words. You don't want to keep going. You can't keep going because you don't have the words and you can't say nothing to me because you sound stupid coming to me about another nigga's business. That's not your business. This is literally none of your business literally none of your business mind your business while you up here standing up jumping up throwing drinks throwing purses and then when Giselle comes back from the car she says Mia is upset rightfully so what y'all really went to go see how Mia was doing I have zero respect for you you are a liability I by no means wants to be anywhere near you after she threw it mia was the aggressor mia initiated it this was all mia but y'all went ran to comfort her and just a few seasons ago 
somebody who is okay with violence now. But when Monique did it to Candace, she was against violence. I'm not here for hypocrites. You were upset about the way that Monique behaved. I have zero respect for you. You are a liability. But now, Mia's upset rightfully. So, oh, Wendy gets up. Where are you going? I'm not going to sit here and listen to Mia empathizers. You see Giselle acting like, girl, I don't care. That's why this group of women, they're not friends. All the, that kind of stuff. No one, except for Ashley, went to go see how Wendy was doing. Ashley said the drink, it was okay. But after she got physical again, she was like, absolutely not. So I'm going to see how Ashley moves through this. We're going to see how Ashley moves through this. And see what she goes. Because when Wendy got up and said that, you know, with the empathizer, Ashley made a face. Because last year, because when Monique did that to Candace, you didn't, you didn't approve of it. But now it's okay. Got it. And I'm so glad in that moment she called out the hypocrisy. She should have. And she got up and she got, she got the fuck up out of there. Robin, Wendy's the winner. Wendy's the winner. Yeah, I won. I won. I won because the bitch got physical. Then she came back and acted like she was cool and got physical again. She's in, she's not in control of herself. She's a wild, ferocious, unhinged beast. And I want to see how y'all treat this person. Somebody online was like, she insulted G. How? When just the last episode, she asked G what was off limits because G says, you know, we get x-rated. So I don't know what the fuck you and your husband do when you come to Miami, but we don't check in with no motherfucker we doing business with, bitch. Especially if I don't know I'm coming to his fucking restaurant. So you can get the shut up. Every t Let me tell you something. Moving forward, if I was Wendy, Everything that I would say to Mia would be, shut up. Girl, shut up. Were you talking? Shut up. Girl, I'm done talking to you. Shut up. Every time. Shut up, girl. And you're going to come out of your uh, peace every single time you see me, bitch. Shut up. With your ugly ass. With your ugly Teddy Perkins looking self. With your crater face. I don't want to hear anybody talking about she's skin shaming. I don't want to hear none of it. I don't want to hear none of it. Because you threw a drink in. We're going to start at the beginning. Please make sure you start at the beginning. Because when Mia came back from talking with Peter, she had a hair up her ass. And she wanted to create conflict with Wendy. And because she couldn't get it on the Peter thing, as soon as Wendy said something, I don't know about what you and your husband do. Now, all of a sudden, she's talking about G. And then you're going to hold Karen to it. She's talking about our hus my husband. I guess you don't value husbands the way I value husbands or whatever the fuck she was trying to say. Girl, shut up. Girl, don't nobody care. Really, they don't. Really, they don't. And, I, and she broke a nail. Karen, not Karen, Giselle and Robin go running after Mia. Did y'all see that? So what was the reason? So what is the reason why? What? So tell me how Wendy was wrong. Because I, from my, from my perspective, Wendy's not wrong. Um, the P thing with Peter, you were wrong. You were out of order. It was none of your business. You threw a drink. She didn't get up and say nothing. She get, kept cussing at you and then said, what the fuck are you going to do? And she got up. She said, I let you, I let you throw a drink, but the next time I'm, I'm not going to be so kind. And she got up after that because now I have a right to defend myself. Now what I'm doing is defense right? Robin had the nerve to tell Wendy because she keeps talking, she's antagonizing. And this to me is really gaslighting. I remember when I was assaulted and I was cussing the motherfucker out who was, who assaulted me and the people around me were trying to get me to be quiet because I was cussing in front of my grandmother. This is after I had been assaulted. So my reaction it's justified. I'll cuss you out. I'm going to talk about everything. You do threw a drink on me. You assaulted me. So I'm going to say in your crater face, your mama, I'm going to talk about your husband. I'm going to talk about everything. I might talk about your kids. Yeah, I might take it there. 
I might take it there. I might take it there. I might throw the kid. Oh, no, Erica, you can't throw. I might. So I'm no, mm -mm. we're not playing these games and y'all going to get enough of going on trips, breaking bread with women and people that you do not like. And it just keeps reminding me of that girl in Cabo. It really does. It's like these situations and then Robin filming, trying to say, I want to get, he said, she said, and then she tells, then she tells, um, Wendy, if you're going to fight, go fight. But if you're not, be quiet. Girl, what? An awful role model for black women, for her <laughs> daughter. Is what? Is this the advice that you're giving? Girl, I'm a PhD. I can't be fighting this stupid bitch whose husband then gave her a blazer and told her she was a CEO. Girl, what? No. Fight. And that's what she was like, Robin, you got to be like, what did she tell her? You got to be fair. And they're not being fair. And because they're not friends. What'd she say? Now, you know, Mia's my girl, right? I love Mia. But that was completely unnecessary. How's Mia doing? And she, she's not doing well at all. Rightly so. And um, she's going to figure out her next couple of days. Um, I can I can leave because I'm not gonna hear Mia empathizer or somebody who is okay with violence now. But when Monique did it to Candace, she was against violence. I'm not here for hypocrites. I'm in the house. I'm gonna beat the shit out of her. Oh my god. That was the end. I'm going to be in the house. I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of her because that's messed up. Wendy did not have any support. I mean, outside of Ashley coming and saying, you know, I didn't really agree with her, you know, throwing the purse, doing the purse thing. And the security guard, even the security guard was telling Wendy, you're better than that. The security guard didn't tell, um, hood rat. And then, and then did you, did you hear when they came, when, um, uh, Mia came back to the table and she had the nerve to say that Wendy was ghetto. Girl, you just threw a drink on me at this man's restaurant, your brother's restaurant. You just came out of your peace over something that didn't even concern you. You threw a drink at me. I get loud with you after you throw a drink at me and I'm ghetto, bitch. No, we're not playing these games. Anyways, y'all, that's the end of it. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.